everyone welcome back to my channel so for today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved this beautiful 3d textured sugared type animal print abstract half branch <laughs> design um it's a lot of fun bright colors but first i gotta show you guys the glitters from the new light elegance glitter collection the whodunit collection they have their color gels and their p plus gel polishes um, definitely check them out. But these are, I love their glitter gels. So I had to show you guys. So this first color is called No Clue. Um, and I love a good theme. But this is like a tealish. It leans a little more blue than a teal. But it definitely has a green undertone. It's holographic, as you can see. Like medium grit glitters. Super pretty. It has like a sheer black base to it. So it's a little bit deeper, but it's it's beautiful. This one's Miss Suspicious. I, I, I love a good theme and I love how Light Elegance always has themes. So this is a mixture of like a silvery reflecting glitter, like a pearl-ish glitter. It's so pretty. It has like a little small shimmer, like a pearlescent little shimmer to it from what I can tell. Um, nudish kind of rose toned pretty neutral this one's called smoke and gun oh and i love this one it's like a more cool toned gray type color but you see this beautiful shimmer it has a mixture kind of similar to the last one but smaller finer glitters overall like that pearlescent matte type glitter mix with the silver reflect type situation a whole bunch of type situations this one's called questionable moves and this one's fun it's like a blue purple iridescent coated shard <laughs> glitter um these glitters can be encapsulated in the nail i would definitely recommend you encapsulate in the nail um put a base of cool gel put the glitter build it to your liking and encapsulate with um, cool gel extreme something like that. So this one's called what's your alibi and it's so fun It's definitely more copper than rose gold. It has these bigger holographic um, Hex glitters with a mixture of finer ones um, It's absolutely beautiful. This is their fall collection and these colors are really feeling fall This color is my absolute. This is this is the one they're all beautiful, but look at that caught red-handed look at that and i would definitely put like um a similar color like a reddish pinkish tone glitter as a base but it definitely reads it leans more pink toned um so it's not just a straight up red it definitely has that pink tone to it but look at that it's holographic oh my gosh so yes Head on over to the website to get all the details, um, when you can launch, purchase, buy the new collection. If you're watching this in the future, it might already be available to you. So this is my client's previous set, um, which I did a video on and they were on for, I think about four weeks, five weeks. They, um, she went they went through <laughs> they went through a lot um so i'm using the um, cutie patootie bit to kind of start that cleaning process i filed them down i didn't get to catch that i did that off camera we got off any lifting she of course was missing a nail like i said she she put these nails through so um this client has a little bit tougher cuticle um cuticle area and the epinicium is a little gets a little more callous is a little more firm so I sprayed her hand just with some some alcohol and push that skin back it kind of softens it up a little bit without having to introduce water in the service so just a little hot tip trick so I did that let that dry back out and just reapproach these nails with that bit just so I can push that live skin back and get that dead skin, which is our cuticle, off the surface a little bit better. So now I'm going in with the itty bitty, itty bitty bit from Light Elegance, and I am removing the cuticle from the nail surface, and you can use this bit in both forward and reverse directions. That way you can clean cuticle off of 
um, you know, kind of different little nooks and crannies and you can get it from different directions because it can grow in different directions. So make sure you hold this bit as flush to the natural nail as possible so don't you, you don't create any rings or anything like that. As far as speed, I leave it at about between six to 8,000 RPMs um, so that we're not, you know, applying too much speed um, on the natural nail. We also wanna watch our pressure. So our pressure, angle, and speed is what we want to make sure we're being cautious of. So now I'm using um, the Buffy bit just to go around, I'm going forward and in reverse, and you see how that's just working all that excess dead skin off. Um, I mean, as much as possible, um, a lighter touch, still six to 8,000 RPMs. Um, when you are getting used to prep services, I um, or dry manicure services, I definitely recommend you try it out on yourself so you can get your um, pressure and everything down. So you can make sure you're not, you know, applying it too hard and uh, potentially hurting, you know, your client. So test it out on yourself. If it hurts you, it probably hurts them. So I use Light Elegance's Tack for um, our primer. I cleanse the nails I didn't show. I cleanse the nails with the Light Elegance Pro Cleanser. I use that as my, um, you know, dehydrating step and just to get everything nice and clean and ready to go. So we applied tack and now I'm going in and I'm filling these nails with Jimmy Gel and it's the Ideal Pink Jimmy Gel. Just really quick. Um, that's why, I, I mean, I really love Jimmy Gel. It makes refills so fast. Um, just that ease because one, the brush is beautiful as you can see, it has that nice, rounded shape so it fits really nice into the cuticle area and just that ease of picking up product just out the bottle and applying it to the nail it self levels really quickly um so it can make the feels go by a little bit faster but it depends on what you're comfortable with as well because it again it does self level a little bit more quickly um it if it's on a longer nail um, and you're not used to gel application, it may run a little bit more for you. I recommend if you're starting out with Builder Gel, you're interested in it, you've never tried it, I definitely recommend a medium viscosity gel. In the Light Elegance line, that's gonna be their Cool Gel or their Extreme Gel. Definitely check out those viscosities. Um, I think that will allow you to see the true benefit of gel because it's not going um, to self-level that quickly. It won't be as runny, but you can also um, have all the benefits of self-leveling because to me, that's the best part about using Builder Gel. I mean, there's many, many wonderful reasons. No sp smell, easier to file, I can go on. Um, but one of the greatest things is because as you can see now is just the fact that it self-levels. Um, it works with gravity. It's more of a delicate process. It's gentle. Um, you know, you don't have to dig your brush too deep into the product. So definitely try it out. And if you are gonna try it out, a medium viscosity. So I went ahead and shaped the nails off camera. And now I'm finished filing and I'm using the Shaper Bit from Light Elegance, which is essentially, it's a diamond bit, a cross cut style diamond bit. And those cuts in that bits are there, cut in that bit is there to help relieve heat. This bit can be used on the natural nail. I would still use it at about six to 8,000 RPMs. Um, on this finish, finish filing surface, I use it at about, 10, 11,000 RPM. So I'm just gonna cleanse the nails off. I'm using the Light Elegance Pro Cleanser and just a firm, a more firm cuticle brush and um, just to dehydrate, cleanse it off, get as much dust and dirt out. So I'm gonna be going in with buttercreams. You guys know I love, love the Light Elegance Buttercream. So we're gonna be using a few super bright summery ones. This one is actually a gel paint. I wanted to use this color yellow, so we're going in with the gel paint instead. Um, it just has a little bit thicker viscosity. I also was using back seat necking. Um, I just didn't have a good bottle to show you of it. <laughs> um, so I'm going also with the stripey brush. And I'm going to use the stripey brush to create this 
kind of half French design. So I am just using this brush. Uh, at first I was gonna do like a literal half French. It turned into like a swirly half French, as you can see. Um, and the original this di design, my client did have a picture. So it was inspired by that picture. The colors were slightly changed. Um, with the biggest thing being this instead. So the original design had French and I was like, let's kind of mix it up a little and just for it to be abstract and we'll lay the animal print just kind of over it. So I'm using that stripey brush, as I mentioned, this is from the Selena Ride-In collection and going in and refining this curve. Now you can use the swirly brush and it's better to do Kind of fine curves and swirls with the swirly brush that's its namesake um, but it can kind of help in a situation like that usually with longer swirls kind of curve lines like this I do prefer the longer brush but they can also be hard um, more difficult to navigate when you have so much length and trying to curve it around so kind of pick your your poison, your battle. Because <laughs> um, with with the shorter brush, it may be a little more difficult to get a smooth line, even though it can curve a little better. But that's mostly just me. But that's kind of the pros and cons to using either brush. So I go in, get that curve how I want it, fill in up the sidewall area, and then use the Light Elegance Gel Polish Number no. 6 the Bling Brush just to fill in. And you can also use those bristles, which you'll see in a couple different clips. I'll use those bristles to kind of help make that curve a little bit more. I'm trying to make it where you can tell that it does a slight swirl. And I'm finding it kind of hard to portray, as you can see. So just trying to balance that out. And at the end of it all, there's going to be animal print over all of them. So again, pick pick your battles. <laughs> um, so I'm just repeating with the various colors. Each nail is going to have kind of a different animal print type effect. Now, as I mentioned, this was inspired by a... Um, said that the client brought in a picture so some of the designs i'm not really sure which animal is trying to portray but it feels like animalistic so we'll go with it <laughs> but overall i think it's cute and it portrays what it's supposed to portray so again trying to get, create that swerve this one kind of looks yeah <laughs> it doesn't look very curvy and swirly so I'm just going in trying to refine that and just wiping away <laughs> when I don't like it as you can see no wipe or nothing just the finger because like ah, I want to get this right so repeating that with the um, paint gel which this that's what this yellow color is it's a little thicker viscosity so um it has a little more drag to it as you can see so with products like that just be mindful um, of how to apply like this applies a little bit thicker so I went in and smoothed it out so it's not curing in that more thicker 3d state so that we get a nice good cure and we don't have that texture to worry about so when I'm using this brush I'm making sure that I smooth that out and as I mentioned like you see I'm using the actual curve of that brush and getting that curve together <laughs> that part of the swirl um, and you can see my gel polish brush has had its time um, I've used it for application for all different things glitters uh, mistreated it <laughs> but it's 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 still working you know brushes they get as, as they go through time as they wear as we abuse them which of course we always want to take the best care of our brushes um but it does happen as we um 
use them. They just become, you know, they just get different jobs. So when you start looking like this, you get to be in a fill a fill in brush. You get to be a glitter application brush. Um, you know, you, we just get different jobs. <laughs> Um, so after we do all those swirls, I'm going to go ahead and top coat and I'm using super shiny top coat, which I love these, the brushes, they have that curved shape. They're a little bit wider, so they fit, fit real nice around the cuticle area. So we're going to apply super shiny, go ahead and cure, wipe off the inhibition layer. So we have a nice surface, um, because we're going to be sugaring. So when you are doing a sugaring or 3D texture, this type of effect, whatever you want to call it, you want to top coat first, generally speaking. Um, so we'll top coat first, matte or shiny, go ahead and top coat first because it's going to be hard to top coat around it. So did you know that Elegance Mix has acrylic? Like they do, they have their Apex acrylic system. So, you know, if you're in the market, these days for me, acrylic is more, I use it more for like as pigments and like for 3D work such as this or actual like 3D flowers. I can, I'll do that every blue moon. That's about it. So I'm going in, I'm using the stylus as well. The needlepoint one, which I absolutely love. I get so much use out of it, especially in abstract things like this or more natural organic patterns and everything I get more use out of it it's one of lately one of my favorite art tools so I definitely recommend it to you um and I've had people um in like one-on-one -on -one classes use it and like oh I really love this it makes certain designs absolutely easier especially like this cheetah type design less pressure with having to use those bris bristles and curve them around. You can more so use this tool um, similar to a pencil, if you will, which is a little more innate to us to use. Um, oh, probably most of us just growing up school system um, using, you know, pen, paper, pencil, paper. So using this, um, you might find comes a little more naturally than using a brush for certain artwork just because a brush you um you know you have to hold your hand a little bit differently you have to worry about the length of the bristles and where they're gonna go and what their follow-through is especially on a curved smooth or slick surface so definitely recommend this stylus for designs like this and look how easy it makes this so some of these designs, I'm kind of going with the curve that's there. Some of them, I'm just kind of ignoring it. For all of them, I'm applying that buttercream. While it's still wet, we're going to go in and uh, pour our acrylic powder over it. And we want to pour enough so that the actual design doesn't look wet. So if it's still looking wet, apply more of the acrylic powder over it because we want to get it fully saturated with the acrylic powder i guess saturated would be the opposite word maybe i don't know but we want to make sure that um the gel is completely absorbed by the acrylic powder uh, that's my best word i'll lock in that word so <laughs> we want to make sure of that so when you go in um and i'm just using i have just found these little spoons some years ago i keep them at my desk for instances like this, but whatever you have on hand, um, go in, pour that over, tap the finger, cure it, and after you cure it, you can dust it off. Do not dust it off before you cure it. You're just gonna just mush up and mess up your design. So don't do that. <laughs> so this, what print would this be? Is it like a little mini giraffe print? What is it? Tell me, some of these prints, they feel animalistic, but I'm not 100% sure what they are. This kind of feels reptilian. I'm not sure. Put it down below what you think the pink and yellow nail is. Um, yeah, let me know. So as you can see, continuing the same process, 
pouring that acrylic powder on top of it, kind of tapping the finger to wipe off the excess, and then going ahead and cure it. And I'm using my light elegance light, LED light, of course. I really enjoy this light because it is acetone resistant, which that is hard to find. I've been through many a plenty of lamps in my little nail career. <laughs> And having an acetone resistant light is something I took for granted. And since I have one, I definitely like it. It cleans up, the light's able to be cleaned up a little better. It stays better looking longer. Um, the thing that I have the hardest, and I mean, it's not the, it's glitter. Glitter's just glitter and it's hard to come off, whatever. So it has like this suction to the light and I'm constantly trying to get it off. But not the light's fault, it's glitter's fault. But are you ever really mad at glitter? No. <laughs> so for these designs, I'm using the stripey brush just because they're a little more kind of thinner, linear in a way doing like, I'm not sure what this, this feels like a loose, still kind of cheetah-ish, zebra-ish print. I'm not sure. So going in, with this brush and this is more definitely of a zebra print i'm using that black tie buttercream and you see how i'm using this brush and i'm going for more pressure to less pressure just to create those finer kind of flicks off um kind of wispy parts of the line so more pressure and when we want it to be thinner or kind of go wispy or flick away less pressure. So when we have more pressure, it spreads, it spreads those bristles out so that line will be wider. And as we move down the line, we can have less pressure at that brush, which we'll be using less of it. It won't spread as much. And then um, we can get those finer lines. That's a concept you can use with just different art styles, like flames, certain like curve with speed swirl type designs. It just kind of depends, but um, just a technique you can kind of play with um, while practicing or doing nail art is um, using the pressure of the brush to create different effects and not just the actual, you know, moving the brush itself. So again, just repeat, we're pouring that acrylic powder on until that gel doesn't look wet on the surface anymore, curing it in the light. Once it comes out the light, we can go ahead and dust it off. And once you do that, that nail is done, unless you're adding, I don't know what else you would add um, to it. But past that, it's done because we've already top coated already. If you were doing a design like this, with crystals or some other element, I would um, more than likely do that first um, before we even top coat it, apply your crystals or whatever you would have in addition to this, decals, whatever. Do that first, top coat, get your crystals sealed in or whatever, top coat, and then you can go in with this same process as well. So generally speaking, when you're doing a sugaring thing like this, it'll probably be your less last step in your design process, um, or even your last step through and through, especially if you're doing it with like a loose glitter or something, and you have like different designs on each nail, I would probably still do the sugaring last just because glitter can get everywhere and you're using like an excess of it just to be able to apply it to these nails to create that sugaring effect. So you can definitely do this with a loose glitter. I would do it with a finer glitter, not just this because of this specific design, um, just because it's going to adhere uh, better, it's gonna last longer. If you want meaty, more medium, um, or even bigger hex type glitters, I'd probably encapsulate those. Generally speaking, there's an exception to every rule, but I would probably encapsulate those so they can last 
Um, so I have a little flash cure light that I went ahead and used just to set that design just because I was going back and forth, back and forth. And I just wanted to get it locked in. Some designs I, I was doing on the same hand. So just a little cheapy one that you can get. Um, I like to have, have around just to lock things in here and there. So I'm back with my stylus just to make this reptile. I don't know if it leans more alligator, more snake print, not sure. But for this type of design, you can definitely make it look a little more realistic. Um, but this is kind of the essence of what goes on. It's very patterned, which I kind of don't appreciate. I mean, the the actual skin is like semi-patterned, but not as perfect, if you will. Not as clean shape. Some shapes touch and everything like that. So definitely when you're doing animal print, um, you know, see what makes it look like it. So as you can see, I'm adding a little more. I'm extending those lines out just to make them a little less perfect and a little more abstract just to make it look a little bit better i felt like it was too rounded it looked like just a rounded rectangle shape lined up in a row more so than like a snake ish type print so i just added some imperfect little pieces off the edge of it and i'm just using the stylus to create all this what have we learned here today that this stylus is amazing definitely definitely check into it it's cute too it has a little little bling on it so i never show this but my final step um generally speaking is i lift up the lamp and have my clients turn their thumbs the inside of their thumbs just to make sure they're cure i just have to double check it have to so uh the lamp lifts up so it makes it perfect um so you can do that flash cure do those pedicures or whatever so like i said this is our final step and we are done you guys we did this look with buttercreams jimmy gel um light elegance apex acrylic powder and that bling stylist really came in clutch for this set so you guys definitely check out Light Elegance. I want to thank them um, always. Um, check out their new um, fall collection. Definitely cute. Like I said, they have more colors than um, those glitters, but those glitters are amazing. So check them out. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, bye. Bye.